A simple chair such as this contains a variety of joints, all efficiently constructed with the jig using just two cutters. First up is the back rail, 60 by 30 section with an overall length including the tenons of 350 millimeters. Cut the tenons with the depth of cut set to 25 millimeters. Keep the guide bush pushed to the outer edge of the aperture, increasing depth of cut by about 5 millimeters at the end of each circuit. Reverse the timber and cut the other end. Next, a side angle haunched tenon. You need a pair of these, one at the front end of each of the side rails, which will enter the mortise to be cut in the front legs. The end of the stock can be cut with a router to give the correct angle, in this case 88 degrees. Set the vertical guide accordingly and route off the top to the correct angle. Then it's ready for the marking out. Mark out the center line and shoulder marks on the end grain. Lower the timber in the jig and set the templates to cut the full length tenon first then machine as normal. Mark the wide template position with a pen for resetting later. Then reduce the aperture on the face edge side by 10 millimeters and reduce the depth of cut by 10 millimeters and recut the tenon, creating a haunched tenon. At the other end of the rails, we will cut a compound tenon, again at 88 degrees for the edge, but for the face of the leg, square this mark around to the face edge. Set the tilting back plate to 81 degrees and insert the timber in the jig and line up to the mark with a steel rule as shown. Sliding the top plate towards you will assist in marking the compound shoulder line around the timber. Bisect both edges and mark the waist for the tenon shoulders. Use a square to then run verticals up from the edge marks and the shoulder marks. Move the top plate away and measure up from the shoulder line the finished length of the tenon. Mark and then lower in the jig until the mark is flush with your rule. Mark a side and face. Remove from the jig and saw just clear of the line with a tenon or chop saw. Here we can see from the underside the cutter machining the end grain to the correct compound angle. Raise the timber once more and pick up from the vertical lines. Transfer them across the end grain. This, of course, will provide the canted center line for the setup bar and the shoulder lines. Again, use the setup bar to position the sliding templates and machine with the jig. The completed left hand side rail showing the haunched tenon and the compound. Next up, we will machine the tenons for the two lathes. The lathes are template profiled on a router table on the front face prior to tenoning. The top tenons are machined at 93 degrees, a reading of just 3 degrees on the side scale. So adjust the top plate accordingly and mark out and machine as before. The lower tenons are machined at 87 degrees, reading minus 3 degrees on the side scale. After machining the tenons, bandsaw the waist and profile the backs of the lathes. Having cut all the tenons, now we can cut the mortises. The slots for the base of the lathes can now be cut in the back rail. To line up with the back edge of the lathes, the center line in this case is 10 millimeters from the back edge of the back rail. Remove the vertical guide and use the setup bar to ensure that the sliding templates are in the correct position. Then a simple trench is cut using the 7.9 mm cutter in conjunction with the 25.4 mm guide bush and collar. 
machine left to right, taking multiple passes until the correct depth of cut is achieved. For the top rail to receive the lathes, it is marked out the same as the bottom rail, but the tilting back plate is set to 75 degrees to take account of the angled section of the timber. Mark the back legs as a pair, having first profiled the shape. Leave the top and bottom over long. Machine the side rail mortise first and set in the jig, using the downstand on the setup bar against the flat portion of the leg. Machine to a depth of 35 millimeters. Rotate the leg through 90 degrees and line up for the other mortise. Use the setup bar to set the position of the sliding templates. Machine as normal. The front leg mortise will need to be machined for the haunch. Insert the leg, supported by a piece of scrap wood, ensuring the edges are flush to each other. Set the sliding templates to the full width, marking the position on the top with a marker pen. The depth of cut is 11 millimeters for clearance and route the mortise. Then slide the template in 10 millimeters from your mark and route to the full mortise depth plus a mill or two for clearance. The completed mortise with a haunch. To show you the full capability of the jig we've opted to show you how to create dowling joints a good point to remember is that in some situations, when a large amount of timber has been removed, a dowel joint will decrease further removal of timber, thereby resulting in a stronger joint. To improve your accuracy, once you've marked one center line, use a compass to draw a circle on the first intersection. This will aid precise positioning of the dowel template. Machine using the 5 8 guide bush. For the front rail dowels, cant the front plate to minus 9 degrees and reposition the dowel template to the correct marked position. The final joint is a series of dowels on the top rail. Clamp the leg in position and line up the long sliding template to machine three inline dowels. The mating component is the top rail. Fully dimensioned drawings of this chair, including a cutting list, are available to download as a PDF file free of charge from Trends website.